Hood With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Alif Lam Ra I am Allah, the all-seeing. This is a book whose verses have been characterized by wisdom, and they have been explained in detail. It is from one all-wise, all-aware. Say, O Prophet, you worship none but Allah, and I am indeed to you a warner, warning you against the evil consequences of disbelief and evil doings, and a bearer of good tidings to the righteous from him, and that you seek the protection of your Lord against your faults, and then turn to him in repentance. He will provide for you a goodly provision in this life, till an appointed term, and he will grant of his abounding bounty to every one possessed of abundant merit. And if you turn away, then surely I fear the punishment of a great day for you. To Allah is your return, and he is the possessor of full power to do all that he will. Behold, they fold up their bosoms, refusing to accept the truth with open minds, and in an effort that they may hide their enmity and hatred from him. Behold, even as they try to hide their true selves when they wrap themselves in their garments, so that they might not see divine signs nor hear his messages, he knows what they conceal and what they reveal. He is well aware of what is in the depths of their hearts. There is not a single moving creature on earth but its sustenance rest with Allah. He knows its permanent lodging place and its temporary sojourn. Everyone is governed by a clear law. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six aeons, and his throne of power ever rest on water, to which the life is due, that he might show whoever of you is best in deeds and conduct. And if you were to say to them, you are indeed going to be raised after death. Those who disbelieve will certainly say, This is naught but an obvious hoax. In fact, if we defer the punishment from them till a reckoned time, they would certainly ask, What is that which withholds it? Behold, the day this punishment befalls them, it shall not be such as to be averted from them and that punishment which they used to hold in scorn shall overwhelm them. And if we bestow upon a human being mercy from us, and then withdraw it from him, he is totally despairing and completely ungrateful. And if we confer upon him our blessings, after adversity has afflicted him, he will certainly say, Gone are all my woes now. He is, of course, exultant and boastful. Such, however, is not the case with those who steadfastly persevere and do deeds of righteousness. It is these for whom there awaits protection and a great reward. The disbelievers vainly hope that you may omit a part of the revelations made to you, and that you will be distressed and worried because of the fact that they say, Why has not a treasure been sent down to him? Or why has no angel come with him? This is far from you that you do such things, for you are only a warner against the evil consequences of disbelief and rebellion, and Allah is guardian over everything. Do they say, He has forged this Qur'an? Say to them in reply, If you are truthful in your objection, then bring ten forged chapters like it, calling upon whom you can for your help apart from Allah. But if they do not respond to you, then know that this Qur'an which has been revealed is replete with that which is only within Allah's knowledge, and that there is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship save Him. Will you then be the submitting ones after knowing all this? Those who desire the provisions of this present life and its ownature, we will repay them in full the reward for their deeds in this very life and they will be made to suffer no loss therein. It is these for whom waits nothing in the hereafter but the fire, and all that they do for the sake of this life shall come to naught in the next, 
and all their activities shall prove vain and futile. How can he, who stands upon a clear proof from his Lord, and to testify to whose truth a witness from him follows him and to witness whom he is preceded by the book of Moses, which was a guide and a mercy, be an impostor. Those who keep in view all these clear proofs from their Lord, believe in him, this messenger of God. And whoever of these parties disbelieves in him, the fire is his promised place. So, be you not in doubt about this Qur'an. It is indeed the truth. It is from your Lord. But most people do not believe. And who is more unjust than those who forge lies in the name of Allah? They shall be produced before their Lord. And the witnesses will all say, These are they who lied against their Lord. Beware. The disapproval of Allah lies upon the unjust. Those who keep the people away from the path of Allah and seek to paint it as crooked, it is these who are the disbelievers in the hereafter. Such cannot frustrate God's designs in the land, nor is there any protecting friend for them apart from Allah. They shall have their punishment doubled. They could neither bear to hear the truth, nor did they see it. It is these who have suffered a loss in respect of their own souls, and that which they forged have failed them. No doubt, it is these who shall be the worst losers in the hereafter. Verily, those who believe and do deeds of righteousness and humble themselves before their Lord, it is these who are the owners of paradise. They shall abide in it. The case of these two groups, of disbelievers and believers, is like the case of the blind and the deaf on the one hand, and the seeing and the hearing on the other. Can the case of the two be alike? Will you not even then take heed? And similar were the circumstances when we sent Noah to his people, and he said, Verily I am a plain warner to you. And my message is that you worship none but Allah, otherwise I fear lest there should overtake you the punishment of a woeful day. Thereupon the chiefs of his people who had disbelieved said, We find you but a human being like ourselves, and we find none have followed you except those who are the meanest of us, having only superficial views. And we find you and your followers possessing no superiority over us. Rather, we take you all to be liars. He said, O oh, my people, have you considered that if I stand on a clear proof from my Lord, and he has conferred upon me a great mercy from himself, and it has been obscured to you, shall we thrust it upon you to accept while you are averse to it? And, O oh, my people, I ask you in return for this, no wealth. My reward is due only from Allah. I am not at all one to drive away those who believe, for they are going to meet their Lord, and I see you are a people who are acting through lack of knowledge. And, O oh, my people, who would save me from the punishment of Allah if I were to drive them away? Will you not then consider? And I do not say to you that I possess the treasures of Allah, nor that I know the hidden realities, nor do I say that I am an angel, nor do I say concerning those whom your eyes despise that Allah will not grant them any good. Allah knows best whatever is in their minds. I shall indeed be of the unjust if I say anything of the kind. They said, Noah, you have disputed with us long and have disputed with us many a time. Bring down on us now that punishment you threaten us with, if you are of the truthful ones. He said, Allah alone will bring it down on you if he will, and you cannot frustrate him in his purpose. And my sincere counsel will do you no good. Choose as I may to counsel you in case Allah intends to destroy you. He is your Lord, and to him you shall be made to return. Or do they say, He, Muhammad, has forged it. Say, 
O Muhammad, if I have forced it, then on me will be the penalty of my crime, and I am quit of all the responsibilities of this sin you commit. And it was revealed to Noah, No one of your people besides those who have so far believed will henceforth believe. Therefore grieve not over what they have been doing, and build the ark under our eyes, and in accordance with our revelation, and address not to plead with me in favor of those who act unjustly. Verily they are doomed to be drowned. And he set himself to making the ark, and every time the chiefs of his people passed by him, they looked down upon him. Thereupon he said, Surely we in our turn will look down on you, just as you look down on us now. You shall soon know for yourself who it is who will be overtaken by the punishment that will disgrace him and on whom descends a long-lasting penalty. Thus it was till our command about the punishment came and waters of the springs of the valley swelled and gushed forth. We said, Embark in it two of every kind needed, male and female, and all the members of your family except those about the destruction of whom our verdict has already been announced, and embark in it also those who believe. Yet there had not believed in him excepting a few. And Noah said, Embark in it, with the name of Allah, and his help be its course and its mooring. Surely my Lord is indeed great protector, ever merciful. Now this ark moved, carrying them amidst waves as high as mountains. And Noah called out to his son, who was standing aloof, My dear son, embark with us and do not be with the disbelievers. He said, I shall betake myself to a mountain for refuge, which will protect me from this water. Noah said, There is no protection for anyone this day from the decree of Allah, but he will be safe on whom he has mercy. And lo, a wave separated the two, so he, Noah's son, was among the drowned. And it was said, O earth, swallow back your water, and O cloud, abate and stop pouring. So the water was made to subside, and the matter was decided. And this ark came to rest on the Mount al judi And the word went forth, Away with the unjust people. And Noah called to his lord and said, My lord, my son belongs to my family, and surely your promise is also true. Yet you are the most just of the judges. The lord said, he decidedly does not belong to your family, as he is given to unrighteous conduct. So do not ask of me that of which you have no knowledge. I advise you not to be of those wanting in knowledge. He said, My lord, I beg you to protect me, that I should ask you that of which I have no knowledge. And unless you forgive me and have mercy on me, I shall be of the losers. There came the command, Noah, descend from the ark with peace from us, and varied blessings we shall bestow on you and upon peoples to be born of those with you. There shall be other peoples whom we shall grant provisions of this world for a time. Then they will receive from us a grievous punishment as a result of their transgression. These announcements full of warnings, are some of the important news of the hidden realities we have revealed them to you. You did not know them, neither you nor your people before this. Therefore, persevere in doing good, for those who become secure against evil shall surely have the good and successful end. And we sent the tribe of Ad, their kinsman Hud, as a messenger. He said, My people, Worship Allah alone. You have no one worthy of worship other than He. You are but fabricators of lies by assigning partners with Him in His sovereignty. My people, I ask of you no reward for this teaching. 
My reward is not due except from him who created me. Will you not then understand? And my people, seek protection of your Lord, and turn to him in repentance. If you do so, he will send clouds over you, pouring down abundance of rain, and he will add more strength to your present strength. And do not turn away from him, as those who sever their ties with God. They said, O Hood, you have brought us no clear proof about your truthfulness, and we will not forsake our gods merely for your saying, nor are we going to be believers in you at all. All that we can say is that some of our gods have smitten you with evil, rendering you insane. Hood said, Surely I call Allah to witness. And do you also bear witness that I have nothing to do with the gods you associate with Allah? Apart from him, so you and all your gods together devise concerted plans against me and give me no respite. I have definitely put my trust in Allah who is my Lord and your Lord. There is no living and moving creature, but he holds its forelock, having absolute power over it. Surely, right and just are the ways of my Lord. If you turn away from him, remember that I have fully conveyed to you that message I have been sent with to you. If you do not accept it, my Lord will replace you with another people to be rulers and you shall be able to do him no harm at all. Surely my Lord is preserver of all things. And when our command about the punishment came, we saved Hood and those who believed with him by a special mercy from us, and we delivered them from a severe torment. And such were odd. They deliberately denied the commandments of their Lord and disobeyed his messengers and followed the bidding of every haughty enemy of truth. And there was sent following them a curse in this world, and on the day of resurrection they will meet the same fate. Behold, the tribe of Ad behaved ungratefully towards their Lord by denying his favors. Look, destruction is decreed for Ad, the people of Hud. And to the tribe of Thamud, we sent as a messenger their kinsman Saleh. He said, My people, worship Allah. You have no one worthy of worship other than he. It is he who brought you forth from the earth and made you dwell therein. So seek protection of him and turn to him in repentance. Verily my Lord is nigh, responsive to prayers. They said, Saleh, you have hitherto been among us as one in whom we placed our hopes. Do you forbid us to worship what our forefathers have been worshipping? And as a matter of fact, we are in disquieting doubt about that faith you call us to. He said, My people, have you considered that if in my claim to prophethood I stand on a clear proof for my Lord? and he has granted me mercy from himself, who then will help to save me against the punishment of Allah if I disobey him? For then you will increase me in nothing but in leading me to loss. My people, this is a she-camel, appointed by Allah as a sign for you. So leave her alone to pasture on Allah's earth, and afflict her not with any harm, or an imminent torment shall seize you. But they hamstrung her, so that he, Saleh, said, You shall enjoy the provision of Allah in your worldly abodes only for another three days. This is a promise which will never prove false. And when our command about punishment came to pass, we saved Saleh and with him the believers by a special mercy from us, and we saved them from the ignominy of that day. Surely all-powerful is your Lord, and almighty. And a thunderbolt, caused by an earthquake, seized those who had acted unjustly, and the next morning found them lying prostrate in their habitations, as if they had never dwelt in them, 
Behold, the Thamud behaved ungratefully to their Lord, denying his favors upon them. So away with the tribe of Thamud. And certainly our messengers came to Abraham with good tidings. They said, We bid you peace. He said, Peace be on you too, always. And he lost no time in bringing them a roasted calf. But when he saw that their hands did not extend to that meal, he considered it strange on their part and apprehended evil from them. They said, Have no fear, for we have been sent to the people of Lot. And his wife was standing nearby, and she too was inspired with awe. So we gave her good tidings of the birth of Isaac, and after Isaac of his son Jacob. She said, O oh, wonder for me, shall I bear a child while I am a very old woman, and this husband of mine also a very old man? This is a wonderful thing indeed. They, our messengers, said, Do you marvel at the decree of Allah? Members of this house, the mercy of Allah and his blessings are upon you. Surely he is the Lord of all praise, owner of all glory. And when all departed from Abraham and the good tidings came to him, he started pleading with us for the people of Lot. Surely Abraham was gentle, tender-hearted, and oft returning to us. Thereupon we said to him, Abraham, turn away from this pleading now, for your Lord's command has decidedly come. They are certainly going to receive a punishment that cannot be averted. And when our messengers came to Lot, he was grieved on their account and felt helpless on their behalf. And he said, this is a distressful and hard day. And on hearing the news of the stranger's arrival, his people came as if driven on towards him, and before this they were given to evil practices. He said, My people, these are my daughters. They can be pure, guarantee against any conspiracy on my part for you and take Allah as a shield against his punishment, and do not disgrace me in the matter of my guest. Is there not among you any right-minded man? They said, You certainly know we have no claim on your daughters, and you know well what we want. He said, Would that I had power to deal with you, rather I should betake myself for refuse to a strong support. The messengers said, Lot, we are messengers of your Lord. They shall not at all reach you. So set forth from here with your family in the latter part of the night, and let not any one of you look about, but your wife will not obey. Surely she shall be smitten by that calamity which is going to smite the rest of them. The appointed time of theirs is the morning. Is not the morning nigh? So when our command about the punishment came to pass, we turned those townships upside down, and we rained upon them layer upon layer with many stones of petrified clay, earmarked for them by the decree of your Lord. And this sort of punishment is not far from the unjust people of the opponents of the prophet. And to Midian we sent their kinsman Shuaib, as a messenger. He said, My people, worship Allah. You have no one worthy of worship other than he. And give not short measure and short weight. Today I see you in a state of prosperity, but for tomorrow I fear lest there should befall you the punishment of a dreadful day that encompasses all for destruction. And my people, Give true measure and full weight with equity, and defraud not people of their possession, and commit not inequity in the land as peacebreakers. The residue left to you by Allah after your paying the dues of others is better for you if you are true believers. Yet I am not a guardian over you. They said, O Shuaib, does your prayer enjoin you that we should give up what our fathers worshipped 
or does it bid you that we cease to do with our possessions as we like? You, O Shuaib, are you, so to say, the only intelligent and the right directing one? He said, My people, what do you think? While I stand by his grace on a clear proof for my Lord, then why should not I guide people to the path of peace? He has provided me from himself with a goodly and honest livelihood. I cannot therefore be dishonest to him. I have no intention to practice contrary to you the very thing which I forbid you to do. All that I desire is to set things right as far as I can. There is no power in me to do something for setting things right except through the help of Allah. In Him do I put my trust, and to Him do I always turn. And my people, let not your breach with and hostility towards me make you guilty, so that there may befall you the like of that calamity which befell the people of Noah, and the people of Hud, and the people of Saleh, and the people of Lot are not far off from you. You should ponder over their destruction and learn a lesson therefrom. And seek protection of your Lord and turn to him in repentance. Verily my Lord is ever merciful, most loving. They said, Shuaib, we do not understand much of what you say, and truly we find you a weakling among us. And had it not been a consideration for your tribe, we would surely have stoned you to death, and you occupy no strong and respectable position at all as compared with us. He said, My people, does my tribe occupy stronger and more respectable position with you than Allah? And he has occupied no importance in your eyes that you have cast him behind your backs neglected? Surely my Lord encompasses all your activities in his knowledge. And my people, do your worst. I too am doing my best. You will soon know who is overtaken by a punishment that will disgrace him, and who it is that is a liar. And be on watch. I shall be with you watching. And when our command about the punishment came, we saved Shuaib, and with him the believers by our mercy. And the calamity seized those who had acted unjustly, so that the morning found them lying prostrate in their habitations. They were so destroyed and desolated, as if they had never dwelt there. So away with Midian, even as Thamud were done away. And surely we sent Moses with our signs, and manifest strong arguments to Pharaoh and the nobles of his court, but they carried out Pharaoh's bidding, whereas the bidding of Pharaoh was not at all right directed. He, Pharaoh, will lead his people on the day of resurrection and will land them down into the fire, and evil is the arriving place to be arrived at by them. There was sent following after them a curse in this life, and on the day of resurrection they shall be the victims of it too. Evil is the gift which shall be given them. That is a part of the important news of the ruined townships of the past. We relate them to you. Some of these cities still exist, while others have been mown down and perished. We did no wrong to them, but they wronged themselves. And when their Lord's command about their punishment came to pass, their gods, whom they called upon apart from Allah, were of no avail to them. In fact, they added nothing to them except leading them to destruction. Such is the punishing grasp of our Lord when he takes to task the peoples of the townships after bringing home to them the truth while they are steeped in wrongdoings. Surely painful is his punishing grasp, and severe. In fact, there is in that a sign to learn a lesson from for him who fears the punishment of the hereafter. That is a day on which the whole of humankind is to be gathered together, and that is a day to be witnessed by all to be sure. 
and we defer it not but for a computed term. The day it comes, no soul shall speak save by his leave. On that day some will turn out wretched and others fortunate. As for the wretched, they shall be in the fire, where they shall moan and cry, and they shall abide therein, unless your Lord otherwise will, so long as the heavens and the earth thereof endure. Surely your Lord does bring about very well what he intends to do. As for those who turn out fortunate, they shall be in paradise. They will abide therein so long as the heavens and the earth thereof endure, unless your Lord otherwise will. This is a gift that shall never be cut off. So, O people, have no doubt about the falsehood of gods of those polytheistic people. They worship these gods only because their fathers worshipped them before them, and we shall surely pay them their dues in full, undiminished. And we gave Moses the book, but differences arose about it, and had it not been for a word that had gone forth from your Lord, the issue between them, the believers and the disbelievers, must have been decided long before, and now they, the disbelievers, are in a disquieting doubt about it. Your Lord will certainly repay them all in full, the reward of their deeds, for he is well aware of all that they do. So stand you upright, as you have been commanded, and also those who have left their evil ways and turned to Allah in repentance and joined you. Do not exceed the bounds set by Allah, he indeed is observer of your deeds. Do not incline towards those who have committed wrong, lest the fire of Jehenna should reach you while you shall find none to protect you apart from Allah, nor shall you be helped. And observe prayer at the two ends of the day, and in some early hours of the night. Surely the good deeds wipe out the evil ones. That is a reminder for those who would remember. And be you patiently persevering, for surely Allah suffers not the reward of the doers of good to others to go waste. Why then were there not among the generations that preceded you persons possessed of excellence who would forbid the perpetration of evil in the land? But there were only a few of those who acted righteously and whom we had saved from among them. And all others who had committed wrong pursued that wanton ease and plenty they were afforded with, and this led to their rebellion and disobedience, and they became those who cut off their ties with Allah. And your Lord is not the one who would destroy the townships unjustly, while the inhabitants thereof live in peace and set things right. Had your Lord enforced his will, he would have certainly made the whole of humankind one community. But since he did not like to enforce his will upon people, they would not cease to differ. Different, however, is the case of those on whom your Lord has had mercy. Indeed, it is for the bestowal of mercy that he has created them. Yet this word of your Lord, Verily I will fill Jehenna with the rebellious jinn and ordinary people altogether, has perfectly come true. And all that we relate to you of the important news of the messengers is to make your heart firm and strong thereby. And there has come to you, implied in these, the truth, an exhortation, and a reminder for the believers. And say to those who do not believe, Do your worst. We too are doing our best. And you may await our end. We too are awaiting yours. To Allah belongs the hidden realities of the heavens and the earth. To him all matters stand referred. So worship him and put your trust in him, for your Lord is not at all unmindful of what you do.